Let's suppose you hosted your application in a region and unfortunately that region met with a natural calamity or disaster like a flood or earthquake or it could be a data center that lost power or due to cable damage it lost the network connectivity or it could be the most common disaster that is human action like someone actually planned and plotted a bad configuration or it could be damaged due to unauthorized access by deleting your data or even it could erase all your customer information. So why are we saying that high availability is not disaster recovery? You might think both are the same because both of them start with the same operating principles. First, both monitor for failures. Second, both deploy the resources at multiple locations. And third, obviously is automated failover, where if one data store or resource fails, you have the backups to take over. But think rationally about the steps that you take for high availability. So when it comes to availability, you are more focused towards the components or resources of the workload to serve the customer demand. And so that you can operate continuously without failing and you strive hard to meet the service level agreement of service availability. And on the other hand, when it comes to disaster recovery, you need to focus on the time it takes to recover from a disaster. You need to ensure the workload or resources that you have provisioned meets your availability objectives. And the focus is rightly on deploying discrete systems to multiple locations. But the main objective here is also to have a multi-site active active workload distribution. So multi-site active active is a disaster recovery strategy to run the workload that you have in a way that it can serve requests in two or more distinct data centers or regions. So this strategy enables your workload to remain available despite disaster events such as natural disaster, technical failures or human action. And point in time backup, so which enables you and your customers to recover the backup data from a specified time within the retention period that you have set. So let's suppose you have your application hosted on a region with multiple availability zones with a proper scaling mechanism. Your users are very happy with the application status. If one of these availability zones that is data centers get affected and stops responding, so a load balancer is smart enough to route the traffic to other instances in other availability zones. And your users are still fine as they are able to access the application. But what if the whole region gets affected? What is going to happen? In simple words, your high availability is now zero availability. Isn't it? And that's where disaster recovery might come in handy because disaster recovery might tell us to have a deployment strategy of multi-site deployment that is like deploying it in other regions as well, as shown here. If your application is not responding on the region, it can as well respond using other regions. I know you might still have doubts regarding this, so just keep watching and I'll tell you one thing, one of the best ways to avoid disaster is subscribing to this channel. That's my disaster recovery mechanism and it's free. So having said that, let's move on to our third step. The third step is, are you resilient enough? So when you think of trust in terms of your product, you should always remember the word resiliency. This word resiliency in its actual sense refers to the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. So it's same when it comes to your infrastructure as well. So resiliency is the ability of a workload to recover from infrastructure or service disruptions and dynamically acquire computing resources to meet demand and mitigate disruptions such as misconfigurations or transient network issues. Always remember that things can go wrong at any point in time. But the most important thing is how fast you can recover from the disaster. That's where resiliency strategy comes into the picture. So if you see here, disaster recovery and availability are a very important part of our resiliency strategy, where disaster recovery focuses on how workload responds to disaster and how well it can recover from that. On the other hand, availability focuses on uptime or downtime for your resources over a period of time, also known as mean value over a period of time. So when it comes to disaster recovery, if you see here, the response actually depends on the business objective and how you can avoid loss of data that is also known as the recovery point objective that is RPO and the other thing is how well you can reduce the downtime for your application where your workload or resources are not available for use which is also known as the recovery time objective that is RTO as I already told you before 
availability focuses on uptime or downtime for your workload or your resources over a period of time also known as the mean value over a period of time remember it's mean value i'm sure that most of you are totally aware of what a mean value is so we have to focus on mean time between failures that is mtbf and mean time to recover that is mttr in order to understand how we can calculate the availability you need to understand how to calculate mtbf and mttr so first let's check mtbf mean time between failures here you have to calculate the total working time of your application minus the total time of your application breakdown and divide it by the number of breakdowns that you had so like let's suppose you had a total working time of your application that you have hosted as 100 hours and out of which you had 5 hours of breakdown time so breakdown time imagine it is a time period where your users were not able to access your application and there were 10 breakdowns in total so your mean time between failures will be 100 minus 5 hours of breakdown time divided by 10 breakdowns so that is 9.5 and similarly if you have to calculate mttr or mean time to recover you have to check how much time did you spend to bring up your services or application and divide it by the number of repairs that you had to do so for example you spend around 10 hours in maintenance and it was around 5 times that you had to repair the system so mttr will be 10 divided by 5 that is 2 hours so now that you are aware of these terms let's calculate availability yes availability is basically as the word tells you it's the amount or percentage of time or value on how available your services or application is to your user but you have to remember that it's not always that a disaster should occur to impact availability it could be like for example you have created an application design that supports a maximum load of 100 users but what will happen if you get around like 10000 user requests at the same time So you would ask yourself why is it not working for your application to support that amount of load there is no calamity or earthquake or flood still your application is not available to all the users so you have to take some steps to improve that isn't it i think you already have the answer to this and if you do please make sure that you put that in the comment section below as what you feel availability is according to you so now let's get back to this so availability is a measure to calculate the amount of time that your application is available for use divided by the total time or total amount of time it has been hosted so internally it is translated to mean time between failures divided by the total of mean time between failures and mean time to recover so it is mtbf divided by mtbf plus mttr and you might have heard or read about this term called availability in terms of nines so like three nines or six nines so where 99.9 is three nines so this is one of the most desired availability that services are trying to achieve so let's suppose we have a mtbf or mean time between failures that is around 400 hours and mttr that is mean time to recover as 10 hours so if you put that into the formula that we have above so we'll get the availability is around 400 by 400 plus 10 that is 400 by 410 so you'll get a value of 0.975 so you get availability of 97.5% which is not that great but this is just an example so i'm just i'm just showing you how actually the calculation works but availability can be measured with the response as well and not just time so let's see how it works So here availability is the number of successful responses divided by the number of valid requests. So for example, you get successful response as around 500 responses and you have a valid request that you have sent that is 510 request. So availability for you will be 500 by 510 that is 0.98. So if you convert that into percentage it is around 98. So 98% is good but this is just an example I just wanted to show you.